Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you guys doing? Okay, so um, I did a couple of videos on this channel regarding the reparation for my fellow Black Americans, right? And unfortunately, uh, <laughs> a lot of pe uh, some people were not happy about the videos, and I think one of the main reasons is because you guys really didn't watch the videos. Um, you just saw the title and you just jumped to conclusion. Um, I am not against reparation for black folks in America. Nope, no, nope, I'm not. And um, I think one of the only thing I have with with the movement, if, if, if it is a movement, is um, the way that uh, your fellow brothers and sisters from other parts of the world was, was being treated by you so-called ADOS. Um, that was the only problem I have with the movement. Um, and the other thing that you guys misunderstood is when I say that you guys, I don't, I don't believe personally that ADOS is going to get reparation. And that's just my personal belief. I don't think it's going to happen, which brings me to the topic that I'm going to be discussing today, okay? So somebody sent me this article and I am going to get right into it. Um, somebody sent me the, <laughs> this article and I just almost fell out of my chair. Um, amazing, somebody sent me this article, which I'm gonna share with you in a second. And I think it's just a slap in the face for you guys, the, 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 you, you, you uh, my fellow ADOS, um, brothers and sisters here, I think it's a slap in the face. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I, you know, you guys know I don't like long introductions, so um, give me a thumb up, okay? Don't forget to give me a thumb up. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys right now and just get right into this video um, so you guys can see what it is that I'm talking about and how I just felt like this is a slap in the face um, for you, my fellow ADOS brothers and sisters. So this is an article from the New York Times, right? And this article here, the title of it, it says, The Case for Gay Reparation. <laughs> now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really nice with this video. I'm gonna be really, I'm gonna I'm try my best to be really nice okay and I'm, I'm really respectful okay um but i almost fell out of my chair when i said now now this is a serious thing here the case for gay reparation right so what i you know you know what i notice is whenever there is any discussion of anything that has to do with black folks in america um, there's always something that is added to it to take away, to, 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 to kind of move the attention off of black issues, you know? And, and that's why they add, you know, all these other minority groups to, you know, the, the black community. You know, it's, it's like, Everyone is minority, including black, right? They they label you guys black. I mean, um, minorities. They they label black Americans minorities, right? And then they put the gays in there as as minorities, and and then they put the Chinese and the the Indians and all these other communities in there, all these other little groups in there, and they mixed it all in with blacks. You see, and so whenever you guys ask for something, they had to group all of these other groups in there and include all these people in there, right? To, 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 to take away, you know, the focus from your plight, to remove the focus from your issues. Because here it is in 2019, you have black folks in America asking for reparation, right? For what they have gone through uh, from slavery, from the 400 years of slavery. And here we are to this day, 
they've been laughing at you guys. Um, they've belittled you. They haven't, uh, you know, addressed the issue of reparation for blacks in this country. But now there's a, 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 this reparation for homosexuals um, that, we're, that we're now addressing. And here it is in the New York Times. You see, let me, uh, let me just go down here. See, other countries are taking steps to atone for their shameful past treatment of LGBT. The United States should be too, right? <laughs> and here they have what appears to be a black man right here in the front. Page. Have you guys ever noticed how, before I get into this, have you guys ever noticed how they always prop up a black a black face in front of this LGBT thing. Like majority of the time, it's always this black face that represent this whole thing. And why is that? I'm always like concerned. Why is it always a black face in front of these things? Huh? You know, uh, you, you know why? You know why? It's because white supremacy is more comfortable with gay black men. Yes, they are. You see, straight black men is a threat to white supremacy. You see, whenever you walk into a white establishment, right, nine times out of 10, the only black male presence there is a gay black man because that's who they feel comfortable with. You see, it, it, listen, listen to me. I work somewhere right now, my job, right? Where there are only about three black men at my job, unfortunately, right? And <laughs> they're all docile. I, I, I hate to say it. They're all just docile, just quiet and docile. You know, there is no strong alpha alpha black male at my job like all three of them are just these really quiet docile black men there there is not the strong alpha black male because they don't want these type of men um you know around but anyway that's that's a different story but i just wanted to point that out why is it that um you know, it's always the, the black gay male that's propped up. So the New York Police Department apologized last week to the gay community for the 1969 raid of the Stonewall Inn, okay? Now, what the heck is the Stonewall Inn raid? Now, I was, you know, I looked into this and um, apparently, in the 1960s, right? Give me a second, guys. Yeah, in the 1960s, somewhere in 1969, um, there's some gay club in New York City called the Stonewall, whatever that that uh, somewhere in you know in New York City somewhere, and I called the Stonewall uh, Inn, and um, there was some type of uh, uh, uprising there. And, um, but what they don't tell you, what they don't tell you about this so-called uprising is that this was a club, right? Back in the sixties. And this uprising started when a gay black man, uh, you know, did something that they, uh, the, you know, the races, this really did not start it as a, as a gay uprising. This, this was a race related uprising. Okay. They had the black gay men and all the black gay people in the back of this club and something happened where one of the, the police was called and one of the, 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 the black person, the gay black person in the club got into it with the police department or some of the police that shows, showed up and, um, you know, something broke up between the blacks and the police and, 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 and that turned into a big thing. Um, you know, and so now they don't really say that if you were to, you know, Google that, that you, you really, you have to dig really deep 
to find the information on that. But this really was not a gay uprising. This was a police against black gay dude um, who tried to defend himself and it turned into a whole um, thing between this black gay dude and, and the police officer. And then everyone else got involved and now all of a sudden, but see now they changed the narrative of this story and now all of a sudden it's, oh, the Stonewall riot and oh, now they need reparation. You know what I mean? And so it's pretty much the narrative that has been changed uh, in relation to that story there. You guys can go do your research on the Stone Stonewall, so-called Stonewall riot that happened in, I believe, 1969. All right, so now all of a sudden, they, they want to give um, these people reparation. So when I say, when you know, when you guys get upset with me because I spoke um, on, you know, reparation for blacks, I really, you know, I'm not against reparation. What I tried to tell you guys is that I don't think that you're getting reparation. I don't think it'll ever happen for you guys. They will rather give reparation to these people, to these people here to the gay community and all the other minority community before they give it to uh, black Americans. It's not going to happen. And that's what I've been trying to say in my videos. It's not that I'm against reparation. I'm simply telling you guys that I don't believe that reparation is going to happen for black people in this country because they would rather beat around the bush, shove every other community and every other minority community in front of you guys and give those people reparation. That's what it is. Black people are hated in this country and you're not going to get anything. And, and that's just what it is. And that's exactly what I've been trying to tell you guys. You know, a, an apology, an apology from the police, from the New York City Police Department. When was the last time you see a uh, um, a black man or a black child that was killed, that was murdered by a police officer. When was the last time you see a police department apologizing to the parents of that black child who was mistaken? Uh, that little boy that was, he was mistaken, he was playing. He was playing in the park with a plastic gun and the police officer mistake it for a weapon and, and killed the child. Did they apologize to his parents? Did they? When was the last time a police department apologized for killing an innocent black person? But here we are, right? How many years later? Like over 50 years later? And that you have the police department apologizing for a fake uh, a riot? Really? And and now they're talking about reparation? Reparation for LGBT people? Yeah, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, you know, you can get upset with me all you want, but this is the reality. This is the reality. This is the reality. Uh, one of the first country grappled with gay reparation was Spain, which is fitting given the country's repara uh, reputation. First one during uh, the Inquis Inquisition, an institution uh, infamous for burning sodomites at the stakes. All right, okay. Uh, let's see what we have here. Although there is no one size fit all model when it comes to gay reparation, so they they're really they're really going with this narrative. They're really going with this narrative. Although there is no one size fit all model when it comes to gay reparation, countries have taken three distinct approaches. The most common is moral rehabilitation, which entails a formal apology to the state and the <laughs> expansion of expound the sponging of criminal record for those convicted of homosexual offenses. There's also financial compensation for loss of income and pension. <laughs> 
Finally, there's telling uh, truth telling or an official report on past wrong that incorporates step, steps for reparation. Do you guys hear that? Do you guys hear that? Do you, finally, there's truth telling or an official report and, on past wrongs that incorporates step for reparation. So let me get this straight. 400 years in chains and shackles, being raped, being children, babies being fed to alligators in this country, right? Men, women, and babies being raped. Yes, you know, female slaves were not the only one that was raped by their slave masters. There were men that was being raped. There were slave men that was being raped by their slave masters too, and babies. And here you have these people talking about truth telling and an official report on past wrongs, right? And we're not discussing the wrong that was done to people who were treated like barnyard animals or barnyard animals were treated better than human beings that was brought here in chains and shackles. And you're talking about reparation um, for homosexuals, and there is no discussion on reparation for 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 blacks, huh? Really? This is crazy. I mean, I just listen. When I walk out in the street, when I when I step outside my front door. Nobody has to ask me if I'm a black woman. It's written all over my body. My skin is dark, right? When a gay person, when a gay white guy or Chinese dude or Indian dude, when they walk out of their front door, if they don't tell the world that they're gay, no one knows that they're gay. Nobody knows that they're gay. They choose. That's a choice that they choose to tell the world that they're gay. When I go outside, when I walk out my front door, I don't have a choice. The world see me. The world see the color of my skin. The world see that I'm a black woman. You see, so I don't have a choice. So what wrong were done to these people? What wrong were done to these people? What chains and shackles were they put in? How many beatings did they get? Whips and chains on, on plantation, forcing them to pick cottons and 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 and, and sugar canes and, and whatever crops people wanted them to pick, huh? How 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 many how, how many how many whips did they get day in and day out? to work endlessly for free in the hot sun, in the cold winter, and abused and killed and, and hung on trees. When did they go through this stuff? When did homosexual, LGBT, when did these people go through this type of abuse that they deserve reparation? You have a specific group of people who come to this country and went through hell. And now we're talking about LGBT reparation? Are you out of your mind? I swear to God. This is this is I mean, I'm, you know, but listen, guys, let me tell you, let me say this, right? I know a lot of you guys did not watch the videos that I did, the couple of videos I did on reparation, and you probably thought I was being mean or whatever. But you go back and watch those videos. I really was not against reparation. I wasn't. I was simply telling you guys that I don't think you're getting it. And this is the proof right here. I don't think you guys are getting any reparation. I think gay people will get reparation before black people get reparation in this country. I kid you not. And, and gay people getting reparation is all gay people, white, Chinese, Indian, black, whatever. 
Oh, it's a whole rainbow colored group of people that will be getting reparation before black people get reparation in this country. And that's exactly what I've been trying to say. That's, that's what I've been trying to say. But you guys didn't watch the video. You saw the title and you jumped to conclusion and you, you know, misunderstood what I was saying. But this is exactly what I've been trying to tell you guys. I don't believe that you guys will be getting reparation. It's, it's, it's just what it is. They will rather give it to a damn dog before they give it to you guys. It's that simple. It's that simple. Anyway. I need to move on to another story. I'm not going to make this long. <laughs> I need to move on to another story. Here's another story I need to talk about. Sorry, guys. Let me let me go back over here. So here we have we have a dancing cop, right? We have a dancing cop over here, dancing with the you know the the cool the cool cop, you know, in the black neighborhood in the hood, dancing with the black children, right? Doing the whatever the hell kind of dance he was doing with the black children, and the problem I have with this is that black people are so are so um starving to be accepted and i'm talking about both adults and children our people are so starving to be accepted by um people who don't give a damn about them really um that you know, they take stuff like they don't really see beyond this this display of foolishness right here. They 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 really don't see beyond that. All they see is, oh my God, oh you know, it's such a cool officer. He comes, we feel so special that he comes into our hood dancing with us. And that's pretty much what they see. Um so here's here's the officer. Here's the same officer. Uh, who's dancing with those children viral back in 2015 after dancing with children is now going viral in a video where he is punching an unarmed individual in the face. Uh, his name is Officer Anthony Johnson. Again, this is in Ohio and police had responded to reports that there were gunshots in a particular neighborhood. It turned out that they were not gunshots. They were actually firecrackers and the scene was chaotic. Unfortunately, it ended with unnecessary violence, and I'm about to show you the video that's going viral right now. Uh, it is a little graphic, so I want to give you that warning. Take a look. So don't give nobody reason to be hurt. And I'm just wondering what's going on. They in the house. They get... Come on, daughter, get back over here. Get back over there. Get off my back. So. The young lady with the babies, I'm not sure where she was going. Maybe she was going to the house. Um, the the So she's taking the babies over to the other side, I guess, into the house. And that young black man tried to get her to come back to the other side. That's what he tried to do. <laughs> Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably seen this video already. Um, and so let me just make my screen a little bit bigger here. And what the this dancing cop did.
was punch that young man in the face. Let me let me roll it back again. Let me roll it again. Let me roll it back again. Man, I'm just wondering what's going on. They in the house. Get... Come on, daughter. Get back over here. Get back over there. Get off my back. Get off now you know my problem with this video is the person screaming and hollering like an idiot i, I swear like all of that is not going to solve anything jesus christ like all this screaming and hollering and, and just behaving you know I, like just so so apparently there's uh 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 these these people were um you know lighting firecrackers that's what was going on they're having a party and they light some firecrackers and the cops came because they thought it was gunshots right and they found out that it was not gunshot that it was actually firecrackers that was being um you know um lighted and, and whatever and instead of de-escalating this just investigate de-escalate the situation and, and 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 just do your investigation you went there and you escalated this whole situation into to a point where you're 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 assaulting somebody punching somebody in the face for no reason and now you have to arrest that person because if you don't arrest them you look like you assaulted somebody so that's pretty much what happened in this video he punched a young man in the face after that young man um tried to go over there and get his is is the is i don't know if that's his wife or baby moms or whoever she was with the baby she i guess she was trying to run into her house he tried to get her to come back over there and there we have it so you already have a giant weapon on you what uh, really you're what do you feel like you're in some sort of danger and no why are people getting arrested that's what i want to understand yeah. right like you guys show up you realize that they weren't gunshots they were firecrackers by the way they're using some sort of technology uh to determine whether there are gunshots in a given neighborhood but that technology is obviously faulty if it uh, mistakes firecrackers for gunshots so you guys show up and the cops are supposed to de-escalate the situation why did it get to why did it get to the point where people are needlessly getting arrested why is the scene as chaotic as it is? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it, it, they went in and created a problem. Yeah, the, uh, and then you're, you're punching someone, you're assaulting someone, and then you're arresting them for doing something that's not illegal. And I don't blame that guy for, for rushing up, right? You know, I, I think, you know, and to speak in a broader sense to this whole dancing cop thing, it really is, I'm not pleased by it. I'll say it that way, because I know we're not allowed to curse here. Um, but, you know, I think it's a part of the broader sort of issue of propaganda, right? Like these videos of cops pulling people over and giving them ice creams or turkeys, right? Like, you know, the idea of community policing actually is really uh, another point of counterinsurgency, right? With the militarization of police. We've learned that it's another way of that's been learned and sort of exchange and tactics from militaries and occupied territories is this idea that it's another way to extract information. If all the guy did was only ever have that giant assault rifle, right? People would rebel in a different way. But when you get to have things like this, they're actually legitimizing the police as things that, that they should never, first of all, that they were never designed to do and that the resources are in case you guys miss it, the police officer dancing in this video is the same police officer punching some black dude in the face. So you, those of you black folks who, you know, you see the police officer, just like that gentleman says, you know, uh, stop and giving the, your, your black children ice cream and giving them uh, candies and cookies and dancing, going to the water park and playing with them and spraying them with the water gun and, and you know, just doing all this nice stuff. That, that has nothing to do with them being nice, okay? Let me tell you guys nothing to do with them being nice okay it's a tactic that they're using in their police work okay has nothing to do with them trying to be nice to you all right and it's just sad that our people are falling for this stuff
but then continue to go to the police to do things like be a therapist or be nice. Like, yes, it's better that we have nice police than not. But at the same time, the solutions that make communities safe, particularly poor uh, communities of color, is not having more police or having police that can twerk better. It's having it's having resources in those communities, right? And anything else is actually, I think, a distraction from that. Right, having resources in those communities, and more importantly, when it comes to the issue of police brutality, having the resources directed toward better training and, and not relying on faulty technology to uh, figure out whether there are, are, are gunshots in a neighborhood. I mean, again, that was the whole reason why they were there. There, uh, This tech said, hey, there, there might be gunshots here. They show up and they, needlessly uh, lead to this escalation that didn't need to happen. And one thing that I wanted to point out, if you watch the video closely, he sucker punches this guy in the face, right? He's unarmed. And then he like has this huge smile on his face after he does it. And, and this is a cop who claims that he is in favor of community policing. This is a cop who says on his Instagram bio, I grew up hating the police. Now I'm a police officer. I grew up in the same streets I now protect. But is it protecting someone unarmed, you know, when you're sucker punching him in the face? I don't know why he was uh, walking up to, you know, the individual who appears to be getting arrested. But nonetheless, you're running up to him with this giant rifle, which is intimidating enough. And then you're just punching him in the face. No questions asked. It's so unnecessary. So look, a little bit of context. The guy goes up because he thought that they were going to hurt his wife. And so, but as you saw in the video, he didn't bum rush any of the cops. He well, there you have it, folks, for, for, for just in case, just in case one of you white supremacists come and say, oh, he ran at the cops. OK, no, he went over there after his wife. That's what he did. He didn't make any contact. He didn't touch them. He didn't rush all the way into the house. He got to a certain space and then stopped. So now it's it's always in the training. So they tra they tell them, hey, you have to command the area, and and but they don't teach de-escalation nearly enough. Now sometimes the situation is totally out of control, and yes, you of course you raise your voice, you give clear commands. We understand the need to do that from time to time, right? But not every situation calls for, you know, complete and utter force. So here's a guy who is, uh, you know, not doing exactly what they tell him. And then, of course, we get into the issue of the biggest crime in America, even though it's not in any law book, is disrespecting a police officer. So he, this guy decides, I'm going to push you, then I'm going to punch you. But after I punched you, uh, now I have to arrest you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, looked like, it looks like I did something wrong, yeah. right? This is the so, body cam footage. So, does anybody have any doubt as to who the aggressor there is? Right? You can see the video. So he, he paused. The cop told him to stop, and he stopped. He, you know, like one of the cops goes like this, stop, and he stops. And then the guy pushes him and then punches him. And then goes, well, you know, you had the temerity to get punched, so um, uh, I'm going to have to arrest you now. Otherwise, he's going to get in trouble if he doesn't arrest him. So it's a double whammy. Uh, another officer replied in the tape, you did this to yourself. No, I didn't. We just saw the tape. You did it to him. The Columbus Division of Police has uh, responded to this by saying, while uses of force can appear shocking, the officer on preliminary review was protecting bystanders during a call for service where guns were fired. Again, guns were not fired. They were firecrackers. Full investigation to follow. Be patient. Look, I don't mind people being patient, of course. So I'm not saying that they... So they're lying. So they're lying, saying guns were fired, even though the report says it was firecrackers. OK, the guy needs to be fired immediately. Maybe there's other tape. You do the investigation, find out. But we've seen these investigations. We've seen them a thousand times and nine hundred ninety nine out of a thousand times. They say, well, go lo and behold, our fellow cop did everything wonderfully. And that guy did it to himself by getting uh, uh, punched like that by, you know, he, he might have hurt the officer's head, fist like that. So, look, I, I, I don't mind the dancing as much as you guys do, and I, I think it's some sort of effort. I don't know if it's a trick. I don't know if it's propaganda, but I mind the punching after the dancing. So there should be some action. Now, if these guys are, are upset, shouldn't we be upset? I mean, if these news people, if they're upset, because clearly they're not happy about it, shouldn't we be upset? Of course, we should be upset, too, because they're upset. I mean, look at this fake stuff. Look at this right here. He's right. It's propaganda. 
It's propaganda. That's exactly what it is. You think he wants to be there dancing with some black kids in the hood? You That's the same, the same white supremacy officer who just punched that dude in the face. That's him right here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is who you guys want to in, uh, invite to the barbecue. You know, a lot of you um, black folks who's always inviting somebody to the barbecue, right? Because you want to be accepted. <laughs> These people are not your friend. They're not your friend. Let me say that again. These people are not your friend. They're not your friend. They're here for a reason. If they come to your barbecue, they're there for a reason. They're not there because they like you. Anyway, let me go back to my screen. Sorry about that, guys. I'm trying not to make this long, so, um, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to bring that out first, that um, <laughs> that whole LGBT reparation is, is, is a joke. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that, but I just wanted to make, you know, I just wanted to make it clear to, to you guys that I was never against reparation for my people here. Never. I, I was never against it. Um, I was always uh, what I was trying to tell you guys is that I don't think it's going to happen. That was my point. Maybe you guys missed the point, but that was the point I was trying to bring across is that based on the history in this country and the hatred that other groups have for black folks in this country since the dawn of time. I don't think reparation, because in order for them to give you reparation, they would have to admit that all the vile, evil, disgusting things that they did to you guys were wrong. They would have to admit to doing those things first, and they'll never admit it. They're not going to admit it. They're not going to admit that they had your children in shackles and chains. They're not going to admit that they were feeding your babies to alligators. They're not going to admit that they were raping your fourth parents, that they were raping the husband in front of the wife and the wife in front of the husband and the children in front of the parents. They'll never admit any of that stuff. OK, in order for them to see reparation. See, here's the deal. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And they will never acknowledge the mistreatment. Of people of color in this country. And when I say people of color, I'm talking about you so-called ADOS. They will never admit the mistreatment of my brothers and sisters here in America, okay? And that's why you're not getting reparation. That's it. And so they're now looking into giving reparation to the LGBT community, <laughs> which is just um, a slap in the face for you guys, really. It's, it's, it's an insult. That's what it is. But anyway, stay away from these dancing cops, okay? Stay away from those guys. It's a, it's, it's a trap to set up when they come into the hood and start dancing with your children. It's a trap, okay? And some of you guys are so, so hungry for the attention from these people that you don't see that it's a trap. It's a trap. It's always a trap. Get your children away from these people. They don't listen to me. And you, 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 um, you pregnant black woman, you pregnant black woman, when you're out there and you get accosted by a police officer, right? And you start saying, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I want you guys to understand something. A white supremacist, because the police department is overran by the KKK, okay? Yes, I said it, I said it, whatever. 
when you as a black woman are out there and you get accosted by a white supremacist police officer, the last thing you need to say is that you're pregnant. You don't want to say that. You're going to get yourself hurt even quicker, right? They don't want you bringing your offspring into the world, okay? The last thing they need is another one of you. They're trying to get rid of you. They're trying to get rid of you. So telling them that you're pregnant is going to get you killed faster. That's just what it is. Keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth closed. Stop. I'm talking about you, black woman. You, whenever you get, you get, have a run-in with the police officers and you, the first thing, oh, I'm pregnant. Oh, they don't shoot. That's going to make you get hurt faster. I'm telling you guys, because they don't want, they look at you and you're pregnant. They don't want another one of you running around. They're going to kill you faster. Keep your mouth shut. Don't tell them you're pregnant. They're going to hurt you. Okay. That's my message to you, black woman, who's out there, you get into it with, uh, you know, the police. And, and, and first of all, you know, uh, you, you listen, it doesn't matter. Here's the deal, right? It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. That's just what it is. I had this one uh, Caucasian young man at my job said to me the other day that, when he was in his teenage, when he was a teenager, he was drinking and driving and doing all manner of things. And he says to me, the amount of time that I've gotten um, pulled over by the cops, this is what he says to me. And I've never gotten into trouble with the law. OK, I don't have a record, blah, 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 blah. He said, I've been I've been pulled over. I was drunk past, you know, just pissed drunk. I had liquor in my vehicle you know, bottles of liquor, liquor on my, on my, my seat. Um, I was pulled over and the cops, he said one cop, um, uh, followed him home just to make sure that he got home safe. Right. That's what he told me. Um, the other cops just tell him to be careful and just, um, you know, just be careful and take your time and go home. Um, this is, this is a Caucasian young man telling me all these things happen as a young man. Um, drinking and driving and piss drunk and getting pulled over by these race, um, you know, white supremacist uh, people. And he said, I don't have a record. I've never been thrown into jail for drinking and driving and doing this and that and the other. And he just couldn't understand, um, you know, the, the, the discussion where I'm telling him just having a little weed or a little bottle on the seat will get a black man and just and just for just for having your hands behind you or next oh you know underneath the the the, the steering wheel or, or whatever just a slight movement will get a black a black man killed okay and he just see they don't get it because it doesn't happen to them it doesn't happen to them so they don't get it you see keep your mouth shut you get stopped by the cop keep your mouth shut don't say nothing don't say nothing. You ask, you know, let, let, if they have to take you to jail, they're going to take you to jail. Don't give them a reason to, okay? Let them take you to jail and you ask for a lawyer and that's it, okay? Keep your mouth shut. Saying that you're pregnant and all this stuff is only going to get you killed faster. But anyway, stay away from them dancing cops. They mean you no good. Stop inviting them to the barbecue, okay? Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Give me a thumb up reparation for lgbt <laughs> that's hilarious see you guys later bye bye